Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Again, once again, happy Mother's Day to you all. I hope that today you get to spend time with your mother, call your mother, and if she has been sainted and, in the great, uh, and lives with Christ in the forevers, I hope you give thanks to God for the mother that you had. Well, it's Ascension Day. It's actually not that complicated. Jesus, after 40 days of his resurrection, walked out, blessed his uh, disciples, said, uh, the Holy Spirit's coming soon, wait, and then he ascends into heaven. Amen. Can I sit down? <laughs> well, really, what does this have to do with your day-to-day -day life, your problems, the times when you're saying, please help, does ascension have anything to help you with these days? I think it actually does. I think it actually will bring you comfort in a way that maybe you don't think about enough. But it's there. My mother told me something the other day that is not only true for her, it's true for everybody. It's Mother's Day, so I had to bring you up, Mom. <laughs> but it's true. And I agree with you, by the way. So I'm publicly agreeing with my mother. That's my gift to her on Mother's Day. <laughs> is this. She is so happy when she has low expectations for something and then she does it and it's excellent. It just feels so good. Because you didn't expect anything from it. And then when you walk away, you're like, that was so amazing. I can't believe how good it was. I almost skipped it, in fact, but now I can't imagine not being part of that. It's just lifted me up. Those are those great moments, those great expectations where the low, the low was, the bar was set too low, but it, it allowed you to have great joy. I think, and this might shock you, I think your expectations of what life eternally is like is shockingly too low. You have too low a view of what's coming your way. Too low of understanding what's truly coming down your path. Too low of what your history is going to be. It's going to be so magnificent, so amazing. And I know this for a fact, and I'll unpack it a little more, that you'll look back at your life today and go, I didn't know how good it was going to be. But it is. And I'll explain to you why it's that good. It'll make sense. Sometimes, like I said, we just have our eyes and our heart and our mind in the wrong place. It's like if you went to visit a big, beautiful house you're thinking about buying, and it's on the beach. And for the first two hours, the, the uh, realtor has you underneath the crawl space of the beach house. That's all you see. You have a flashlight, cobwebs, dark, everything else. And they're like, look at the foundation. It's so strong. Look at this. And the whole time, what were you thinking? Well, I would like to see what the beach looks like from the back porch. That would be something more interesting, more exciting, better than the foundation. The foundation's good and solid. But you're focusing there instead of seeing the, the glories of what's coming. Our lives are like this. We sometimes miss the view of the beach because we get so focused down into the foundation. Sometimes we get so focused on our day-to-day -day life, only when it becomes extreme or the pain becomes too real do we start to actually look and go, just as our Lord has ascended into the heavens, we will go there one day too. We all like to talk about heaven, and we all like to talk about eternity, and I, and I hear about this by many Christians, but I think, again, the problem I have is we're missing the point. We're, we're focusing on the foundation instead of the view. So if I could get you to talk to me, which you will not because you're good Lutherans, at least now in the pulpit to you, is what are you looking forward to in heaven? And not that there's a wrong answer. There is not. But there is a more right answer. For some of us, you'd say something like this. Oh, there'll be no more sin. That'd be nice. Others would be, uh, I live without death and pain anymore. That'd be nice. 
Plus, we get a healthy body again. That'd be real nice. Or we'll be with our loved ones, our grandmas, our grandpas, people that in our lives who are so dear and special, we're coming back into a relationship with them. And those are all wonderful and good things. But on Ascension Day, we find out what the best part of heaven is. Who else is there? Oh, there you go. Wow. I love that. I'm going to make you a new Lutherans that talk back to me. That, that would make me wonder, happy. But absolutely. The joy of heaven is that the banquet feast is at the head of it is our Lord Jesus Christ. And what we've read about and partaken in the Lord's table and what we've understood as best as we can through faith will become our reality. Who is up there waiting for you? It is Jesus. He's not afraid, we're not afraid of him or he's going to hurt us. This is where our Savior is. Read your scriptures. Wherever Christ walks, sinners find great comfort. And brothers and sisters in Christ, we're sinners. Exactly the people God came to save through his son, Jesus Christ. The greatness is we're going to go live with Jesus. Yesterday, just by accident, I was doing, helping with an Eagle Scout project. And we were cleaning up a graveyard. It was an interesting graveyard in the middle of nowhere, Robinson, in a neighborhood that I, you've never been on this street, I promise you. And in the middle of the graveyard, at one point there actually was a little Lutheran church there years ago. And the graveyard was dedicated in 1865. And so the church is actually gone and the graveyard's still there. We're cleaning it up and I'm looking through all those things and, you know, there'll be sometimes there's Lutheran lo logos somewhere. That was nice. And some of it just had family names. That was nice. And some would have things like a Bible verse and others. I remember I read one. It was kind of faded out and it said, into, I have gone into the loving arms of my Savior. It's pretty. Now, I don't really have a problem with graveyards. I think they're very nice, actually. I, I find them comforting. I know other people have different views of it, but I see the saints of God's bodies at rest, but I know where they're at. In fact, one guy that was there said at one point he had a beautiful apartment complex somewhere in Pittsburgh where it was um, a beautiful view of Pittsburgh, and right next door was a graveyard, and he put it in the Pittsburgh paper for tenants uh, beautiful view of Pittsburgh and very quiet neighbors. <laughs> they are quiet. But the dead do speak. They do speak because they are with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because their stones say it. Because they died in faith and because their funerals, it was declared that they have gone to live with Jesus. And so we can handle death. We don't have to like it. In fact, I suggest you don't like it. But we will deal with it because our Lord dealt with it too. And just as Jesus died like we will, he resurrected like we will, and we will live in eternity with him too. I'll, I'll leave you with this. I was there and they were showing me tombs, graves. And some of these graves are so poor that they actually had wooden markers. You don't see that too often, do you? And the one grave was a baby that was born on Christmas Day. And three months later, that baby went to live with Jesus forever. So at the beginning, when I said, hey, how do I deal with this in the day to day? What does it matter that Jesus is in heaven? It matters because our loved ones like that child, like your family, like you and I one day will go to him too. And we will live in glory, not because there's no sin. That's nice. Or a mansion. That's nice. Or our loved ones are there. That's nice but because our Lord Jesus is there waiting for you. You know, it is kind of an odd thing Jesus does. He's kind of known for that. Usually when someone leaves, it's depressing. But when he left, it's full of joy. It's the only time that ever has happened in history. Someone who we love has gone away, but he went away to prepare our place with him forever. So yeah, he went away, but with great joy, we're going to him. Today, tomorrow, who knows? That's God's will. 
So why is ascension so important? Where is your Jesus? You're going to him too. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.